Okay, Mormons, this is Travis Wayne Goodsell, and the great Jennifer Flower has given me the idea for this video. And in this video, uh, uh, we will have a democratic vote, and it will be determined by thumbs up and thumbs down. Uh, the church is uh, either thumbs up or it's thumbs down. And the the number of of uh, the most number of of votes uh, will be uh, determining whether the church will continue to exist or whether it needs to close its temple doors and never be uh, heard from ever again. Yeah, it's absurd, isn't it? Democracy is horrible. Because Mormons, if I get viewers that give me more thumbs up against the church, or I guess would it be thumbs down? <laughs> if people don't want the church more than they want the church, the church is gone. You lose the church. How is that fair? And likewise, for those who know the church is pure evil, how is it fair to them if Mormons uh, dominate the vote? So obviously, if I were to get everybody's vote in the entire world, the church would lose. You Mormons do realize that, right? You don't want a democracy vote. Because that's what democracy does. It discriminates against the minority. And at the same time, you purposely turn it into a personal vote through beliefs, through feelings, through opinions. And you tell others, hey, your knowledge is not valid because it goes against your beliefs and you can't do that it just it doesn't work that way you can't go into math class and the, when you're asked to solve a math question of what is one plus one and if you put three you know you would be right under synergy but you would be wrong under straight math. And if you don't explain that you thought the question was asking you about synergy math, and you make everybody believe, oh, it's standard math. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? You're in the wrong, aren't you? And so when archaeological evidence says, nope, the claims made by the church is wrong. When historical evidence indicates that the claims made by the church are wrong. And the church has verified that, yes, they've been wrong. They've been lying and deceiving and covering up. Gospel topic essays. That's the great divide of the church. The church caused it the church's own gospel topic essays. This isn't open for debate. This isn't where Mormons can say, all oh, those who left are weak. They're subhuman because they're apostates, they're demons, they're horrible antichrists. That's the same thing as calling somebody subhuman. Is that what Jesus wants? <laughs> Only to those who attacked him as being that. <laughs> the Pharisees attacked Jesus. He was just preaching the gospel of love. And the Pharisees come along and say, Hey, you violated the Sabbath. <laughs> and so he responds, You hypocrites, you blind fools. That's Jesus' way. So who am I? Am I the Pharisees? Am I a leader of the church? 
ordering you Mormons to comply to my commandments? No! I am in the role of Jesus preaching the gospel of love and Mormons are attacking me. It all started with my bishop, Reed Hammond. And because he drew first blood, I am Rambo holding my position on the hill. <laughs> and you guys are in way over your heads, just like with Rambo. They were in way over their heads with him. They should have left him alone. Hold on a minute, I gotta pause. I'll be right back. So the LDS church is either true or it's not. And uh, it can't be partly true or partly false. That just, that doesn't work. And so all those other uh, possibilities are excluded from the, the question. But it's not something that we can vote on. You know, it's not personal opinion that determines whether the church is true or not. It, it either is by the evidence or it is not by the evidence. And then Mormons, you don't get it. It's Joseph Smith's church you're talking about, or you're talking about Brigham Young's branch off church. Because if you say it's Brigham Young's branch off church that is true, then that means you're saying that all the other branch off churches are false. Just like all of Christianity is false in your eyes. But that's not open for opinion either. It's not open for a vote or an opinionated debate. The evidence is either supporting Brighamite Church or it doesn't support Brighamite Church. And so the question is, Mormons, are you searching for the evidence or are you just praying and getting feelings? Nothing more than feelings, trying to forget your Feelings of love, feelings, whoa, 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 feelings. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but do you get it? You can't just say the church is true because you believe so. And that everybody must conform to your beliefs or be forced to allow you to believe whatever you want. And yes, you can believe whatever you want, unless and until you start imposing that belief on others. When you say those immigrants at the border are illegal, they're animals, they're subhuman, they're criminals, they're rapists, and I know you guys are doing it, I've seen your comments in the Deseret News. When you talk about homosexuals, being subhumans, that they have some gay agenda that they're going to convert you to be gay and destroy your homes and your families, your wife, you know, if you're a man. <laughs> and yes, it's a touchy situation because my uncle decided to help confirm that there is a gay agenda by abandoning his wife and three daughters to go and be gay down in Southern California. That was pretty devastating to not just uh, his family, but the extended family. How somebody can think that they can just abandon the family and abandon the kids to pursue his own desires. So that didn't really help because that just solidifies in the alt-right Mormons that uh, they're justified in their hatred and their paranoia. 
And so Mormons, the Book of Mormon, it's either as it claims by the evidence or it's not by the evidence. You can't just give your vote or your opinion and therefore it is or is not. Because <laughs> critics need to understand that too. Critics can't just say, well, it's, it's not the Bible, therefore it's wrong. I hear that all the time. It's the Mormon Bible. That's not the Bible, therefore they're wrong. So yeah, it goes both ways. Everybody needs to incorporate in their minds the concept of obtaining facts and evidence. And so is Joseph Smith a polygamist? Do you get to vote on it? No! What do the facts and evidence say? He's not. You have to watch my three-part video series on that. Because the church lied in their gospel topic essay on that matter about having lied and deceived the members about the cover-up. <laughs> that's what I go over in the video series. So yes, Joseph Smith was not a polygamist. The church is wrong and critics are wrong because they're believing the church who they already know lies and deceives. You can't go by hearsay. And so it, it, it's so frustrating in this day and age where nobody wants to pursue the truth. Everybody wants to reinforce their belief system and impose that belief system on others, even to the point of militant aggression. You know, going to the courts you will enforce my will upon the whole of society. And if they get the right judge, hey, woo, we won. We've now enslaved the people. Because that's what you're doing. This whole push that the church is doing for religious freedom, they've already got it. It's called the First Amendment. What the hell are they doing pushing for religious freedom. It makes no sense. The church isn't being denied religious freedom. They've got a whole state that they control. They're the richest church in the world, over Catholics even. What threat is there other than the truth that they're a fraud? And that's where evidence and facts expose the truth. So Brigham Young, I can just go on and on. As I told Jennifer, there are numerous thick volumed books that could be written about how the church is wrong. The Brighamite church, for clarification. You know, was Joseph Smith a translator? That's the whole push. That was about the Book of Mormon. That's what Joseph Smith started the church with. The Book of Mormon wasn't the first vision. It wasn't anything else. It was the Book of Mormon. That's what he established the church for, is to spread the word of the Book of Mormon. And it's not your vote to say, oh yes, the Book of Mormon is a true history of the American Indians who spoke Egyptian. Not biblical Hebrew chiasmus. You don't get to vote on that. Your opinions are irrelevant. 
Your feelings are irrelevant. If all you're doing is getting up at the pulpit on Sunday, on the first Sunday of the month in fast and testimony meeting and saying, oh, the book is true, it makes me so happy. Who cares? You're not informing me of anything of value. All you're showing is that you have emotions and you cry. If you're going to tell me, I was reading in this passage from the Book of Mormon, and I decided to find out if that is true. And so I did these certain things, and then this resulted. I now know it is true. Then I'll listen to you. But if you're going to tell me, oh, I did the Moroni's promise, and I, I read the Book of Mormon, and I pondered about it, and I prayed, and then I got this feeling that it was true. I did actual research. I found the facts about the Book of Mormon from evidence. It's not. But I'm not like the critics. Because yes, it's got plagiarism. Yes, it's not an accurate history. Yes, it was from a fictional book of Solomon Spalding. with names. You know, I, I see Mormon apologists, young kids who have been trained by Mormon apologists, who do their videos about, oh, the names that they arrive from Hebrew. It's an Egyptian book, right? What are they doing Hebrew names in an Egyptian book? Oh, well, they were transliterated, Travis. You see, transliteration is the process by which Seriously? You're going to ancient language explain me? Me? Because obviously you guys didn't do your research. You didn't find Charles Anton, or Anton. He wrote a dictionary book, had it published right around the time that Smith family were working on the Book of Mormon. And so it was pretty funny about the story of Martin Harris taking what he thought were characters from the plates to Charles Anton and saying, hey, can you translate this? <laughs> Give me the whole book. Well, it's sealed. <laughs> I can't translate a sealed book. That now is hilarious. It's just rolling on the floor, having a heart attack laughter. Because Martin Harris was clueless. <laughs> but you're never going to know. And it ain't your opinion to decide by vote. You have no choice, Mormons. You cannot live in ignorance. Ignorance is when you live by belief only. That's faith. You cannot live by faith alone. That's ignorance. Christians aren't happy with me now, but you Mormons should know better because the book of James, which Christians should know better, but they pick and choose what they want from the New Testament whenever it suits them. James does not suit them, does it? And as missionaries, we go around telling Christians that it doesn't suit them. Faith without works, without the evidence, is dead. Thus, faith without works is ignorance. That's not open for debate. That's not open for vote. That's not something that we just need to let you have your opinion of and agree to disagree. Because agreeing to disagree 
means that you accept that there's, a, you allow an unsound argument to be presented, that somebody can have whatever belief they want and never pursue the truth. But you Mormons love that one, don't you? Samuel the Lamanite loves that one. If you don't know about Samuel the Lamanite, then you haven't been aware of the the uh, back and forth that uh, we had had. I went on to uh, the watch. I watched. No, well, no, it was his site first, uh, and uh, I tried to add to his video. I didn't criticize. I didn't point out the evidence. <laughs> I added, but it was perceived as a threat. And one of his viewers, subscribers, attacked me on his channel. I couldn't just let that go, but it's his channel. And so I had to point out, hey, this is somebody else's channel, but what you're doing is wrong. I'm trying to add to the conversation here, and you're attacking me. And then I go and I comment to add to another video's discussion, The Watchman, or something like that, Watchtower, I don't know. And uh, Samuel the Lamanite attacks me on that channel. <laughs> Come to find out the two know each other, and they're like, one is government, one is religion. <laughs> but it's not open for opinion. It's not open for vote. Joseph Smith, as a translator, is the Book of Mormon a translation from Egyptian documents? Oh, no, there's Hebrew chiasmus. Therefore, it's not an Egyptian translation, Travis. It's a Hebrew translation. Well, that means the Book of Mormon is false. Because the Book of Mormon itself says it came from Egyptian. But then if you actually did your research, you'd find out that those Hebrew chiasmus parts are plagiarism from other books in Joseph Smith's day. Then go on to the book of Abraham. Did Joseph Smith translate the text of the papyri? No! Even the church now says no. <laughs> but the church also goes a step further and says, Oh yeah, Joseph Smith just made it all up. We call it revelation. <laughs> Are they right? It's not up for a vote. They're wrong. I've done those videos. Many of those videos. But Mormons won't listen. I'm presenting Joseph Smith as having correctly translated not the text of the Egyptians, the pictures of the Egyptians. And yet Mormons are like, no, evil Travis, church says that he was wrong. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just absurd that Mormons attack me. That's how this whole mess started. I moved to Utah in 1996. In February 1997, I make the greatest discovery of the universe, the origin of the alphabet. The language we now use today derived from my discovery. And I once had a Mormon ask, ask me, so what? what? How is that significant? What? <laughs> the mere fact that she was speaking shows of the importance of making that discovery. It's like having a wheel. You know, we have them on cars and all this, but never caring to know the origin of it. To understand how it was invented in the first place. We just take it for granted. Yeah, as long as it gets me to where I need to go, I don't care. <laughs> and so the origin of man. 
Yeah, who cares? I just don't want those immigrants taking my job. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, Mormons, you cannot give your opinions, you cannot enforce your opinions on others, you can't vote for it, you have to do the research. But wait, oh, your prophets are now telling you you're not supposed to research. You're supposed to just read only church approved materials and don't go any further. Don't go to the Greek text. Don't go to the Hebrew text. We tell you what you need to know from the footnotes. When people do that, you know they're wrong. Because if our society had been properly training us on how to do research, how to find facts, how to uh, obtain evidence. Church shouldn't fear if they are the true church of Jesus, that Jesus is running his church, communicating with his prophets. Church shouldn't have any fear. They should say, yeah, search all you want. Here's the historical documents. Here's it all for you. They shouldn't need the gospel topic essays to apologize. An apology is not, I'm sorry. No, it means defend with unsound argument. The mere fact that the church came out with those gospel topic essays is evidence that the church isn't true. because they're defending the church with unsound argument. And then when you go through the essays themselves, you find that they're lying within the essays. I grew up in the church. I was born and raised in the Brighamite church. I'm not attacking you, Mormons. I'm exposing what the church already has out there if you just looked for it. Because I know that it's not sound to argue from a Christian or a Jewish or a, a Muslim perspective on Mormons. I have to use Mormonism against Mormons. And it's not up for debate. It's not up for vote. Your thumbs down and even thumbs up are worthless. YouTube shouldn't even have them. Because you don't select my video based on the number of thumbs up or thumbs down. You have to click on the video to then find out what those tallies are. But you do get to see, I guess, the number of views that my video has, which is why the ones that are more popular, you're more prone to click on for some reason, rather than the topic, rather than the thumbnail picture. But those are the outward ways by which you judge whether you show interest. So, yeah, I can go on and on. Like I said, volumes of thick books. I mean, look at how many videos I've got so far. I mean, I'm, I'm around 500, I guess. And most of you are upset that they're an hour long. <laughs> 500 videos at an hour long, 500 hours. How many 
how many days is that? Let's find out. Uh, let's see. Uh, seven days into 500. That would be 49 is 7. Not quite a year, <laughs> but several months. If we were to put all this into a, a transcript, it would be the thick volumes, wouldn't it? And I'm not done. I've got piles of stuff. Uh, this pile right here, there's all these little papers, post-it notes on top there. Those are all ideas about the church. They used to be over in this pile down here on the shelving unit that I have. You can see the, the shelf here. If I don't get around to them because I get so much stuff to do, they end up going over there. The higher priorities or the new stuff goes here. And if I don't get to them and, and I get caught up with other things, then they have to be prioritized and they end up going over there if I don't get to them. <laughs> we have another 500 videos hour long to go, at least. So if you are here for the first time and you haven't seen any of my other videos and you think that you're going to comment because you know better than me because as I did in my other video, Mormons are experts because they know nothing. You're not an expert if you know nothing. That was the whole point of the title. And I pointed out in the video because Mormons come onto my channel and when you make accusations, when you demean and call me subhuman in some form or fashion, say that I'm a liar, what you're saying is that you know the truth. I know you're lying because I actually know the truth. I did the research. I obtain the facts from the evidence and I'm trying to share it with you and so for you to use unsound argument on my channel and I even had one guy said oh I see you have more thumbs down than thumbs up therefore your video is invalid <laughs> it's not up for a vote uh, people's vote or opinion doesn't change whether my video is correct or not. <laughs> you have to do the research to confirm or deny. And you can't deny just by saying, well, it's not what I believe. It's not what I've been told by the prophets. The prophets would never lie to me. But they do. And they confess that they've lied. The gospel topic essays. You now have prophets saying, hey, we're human. We don't know everything. We go to BYU scholars, apologists, to tell us what we're supposed to believe. Are you not listening in conference? Did you not hear it when they said that? They're supposed to be prophets. They're supposed to be communing with God himself because God has a physical body and is able to communicate with his prophets face to face, remember? They wouldn't be lying, would Oh, wait, damn. They said they lie. But are they lying about lying of the cover up? <laughs> You have to do the research. 
and you find out, yeah, they are telling the truth about that. <laughs> because of Brigham Young. He was not authorized. If Brigham Young is not authorized, that means every other successor to Brigham Young was not authorized. That means Nelson is not authorized. And then when you understand that, everything else makes sense. That's why there are no translations of ancient documents that have been discovered. Why aren't they translating them? Now you understand why the Apocrypha is not in our canon of scripture and why we won't give a accurate, more accurate translation of the Bible. We're still stuck with the worst one in the world. Everybody else has figured it out and changed their translation. Even Jehovah's Witnesses came up with their own translation, <laughs> but not the Mormons. We keep Joseph Smith's revision separate. We shove it in the back of the Bible as a, an appendix, and we don't footnote it. That's why there's been no revelations added to the Doctrine and Covenants. Section 138 was Joseph Fielding Smith Sr.'s dream. And a, a successive prophet decided, hey, we're going to put it in. And then Brigham Young's edition and John Taylor's edition, those aren't really revelation. See, with John Taylor, it was, yeah, Joseph Smith died. He was... He was great like Jesus. And then Brigham Young, I'm taking over. We're doing uh, pioneer uh, wagon trails in 50s and 100s. And uh, you guys are going to go during the winter time so that you will die. And I will go during the summer time. Hold on. And I will go during the summer time with my tobacco and uh, my barley and hops for beer making in the brewery I'm going to establish and the stolen uh, uh, money making press so that I can create the Deseret coin And even though the Book of Mormon said, hey, no polygamy, I'm going to do it anyway. And even though the Book of Mormon was trying to say, hey, blacks originate as humans just like you whites. But we'll take away the priesthood from them anyway. And there's more. And it's not open for opinion, Mormons. You can't vote as to whether Brigham Young was called of God. Because everybody that says, oh, when he and Sidney Rignan were speaking, I thought I saw Joseph Smith appear as if he were speaking instead of Brigham Young. Therefore, I know in my heart, and it's right for me. And we can agree to disagree. No! Nobody's journal. Oh, uh, the Kirtland Temple was on fire and angels and all that were around it. Therefore, it's true. No! I don't know what else to do, Mormons. Your ignorance is pissing me off. <laughs> Literally pissing me off. Because faith without works is ignorance. It's dead. It's not true. Thus it's ignorance. That's why Jesus, you know, took away the talent 
from the guy who buried his, refused to invest it, to enlarge it, to make more money. He was scared. I don't want to lose this. If I invest it, there's no guarantee I'll get a return on my investment. Then the master will be mad. So I'm going to bury it. I'm smart. <laughs> no, you're out. If all you do is bury your faith in the ground, thinking that you're preserving the oil necessary to get into the wedding feast, you're out. Those who have knowledge have the reserve oil. And it's not by your opinion. That's not knowledge. It's not by a vote. That's not knowledge. Knowledge. Why did they write the Book of Mormon? Why did they plagiarize other books? Why did they claim that America was founded by Israelites where one group turned black? And where a secret Gadianton band infiltrated the white group of Indians. What are they talking about? If it's not true, what are they talking about? What are they trying to tell us? It's not open for a vote. It's not open for debate. You have to do the research. Critics and Mormons. All right. We'll end this here. But what's it going to take, Mormons? What's it going to take? You know, because you're not listening to the stats. The stats show that the church is collapsing. 13 million just said, yeah, on well, the church gospel topic essays is enough for me to say, nope, bye. 14 year old girl, whether it's true or not, bye. Brigham Young a racist, bye. Joseph Smith can't translate? Well, that's the whole point of the church, isn't it? That he was able to translate? Bye. 13 million. Mormons. There's only three million of you who are showing your ignorance. That's not my opinion. That's not my vote. Mormons, yeah, they're dumb. I vote for it. Therefore, it's true. No. Watch my other videos. You will then understand why I say that. It's not an ad hominem. I have the facts and the evidence to back it up. And I've shown you from this video. So get over yourselves and get out of the church. Because dealing with Russia is never a good idea. You don't say, oh, well, God will protect us. God will triumph in the end. No. You stay away from the serpent altogether. You don't go to try to tame the serpent using metaphoric speech. So the church is in trouble. And I'm just wanting to help you guys. And yes, there is a way out. There is a solution so that you don't lose hope. But if you won't even listen that the church is wrong, how are you going to listen to the hope that you can have for something better, something truer? That's why you guys aren't caring about my translations of the brass plates, <laughs> the Egyptian documents, guys. That's why you aren't caring about other suggestions on how to do things the right way. 
I created a playlist, How to Be a Better President Than the Presidents of the Church. And that's why I did the video. I am proof that the church is false. All right, I'm, I'm done. Although I could keep on going. Volumes, people. Volumes.